Okie dokie. In this video, I'll be working out two examples for the quadratic extrapolation. If you have not already checked out the linear and constant extrapolation, especially the linear, I recommend watching that first before this one because this will be sort of an extension of that other process. So jumping right into this one using quadratic extrapolation. The goal first will be to find a function that is a quadratic function. Quadratic functions have the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So our goal will be to identify what a, b, and c are. Once we have those, then we'll have this quadratic function complete, and then we will plug in 4.8 to the x value to identify what the function value, the f value, is at 4.8. The first thing we do with this general function with a, b, and c is find its derivative. So using the power rule and keeping everything in terms of a, b, and c, we bring out the 2 multiplied by a, so 2a. We leave the x. The exponent is subtracted by 1 to just get 1, or just 2ax, plus the derivative of bx is just b. c goes to 0, so we can drop it. So now we have f prime, and now we want to go a step further than we did in the linear extrapolation and find f double prime. So it's only in quadratic extrapolation that we'll use all three values given. In linear, we only use the first two. In constant, we only use the first one. So you can pick up on that pattern as you work through these. So f double prime, the derivative of 2ax. Well, 2a is just a constant, and it's being multiplied by x. So the derivative of a constant times x is just that constant, and b is a constant. So it goes to 0. All right, so we have our three equations here for f, f prime, and f double prime. So starting with f double prime, we're going to start with this and with this this says that when x is 3, then the second derivative is negative 2. So we're going to plug those values in accordingly if there is an x and if there's a place to plug in f double prime. So f double prime is negative 2. And then we know it's equal to 2a. On this side, there's no x values to plug in 3, so we don't have to worry about it. And so we'll just have negative 2 equals 2a. Dividing by 2 allows us to solve for a. Right off the bat, we find that a is equal to negative 1. Now, we use the f prime equation along with the f prime information to solve for b eventually. So, we know that a is negative 1. Therefore, in place of this a, we could have negative 1. And then 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So now we'll plug in negative 10 for f prime. So negative 10 for f prime equals negative 2x plus b. But I've left a spot for x because we actually know the x value again is 3. So plugging in the x value and the f prime value, we set up this equation using all our information given about f prime. This allows us to solve for b. So negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. We add 6 on both sides to find that negative 4 is equal to b. So we're on a roll. We have a, we have b. We can plug those in respectively now to the original negative 1x, negative 4b, and, or sorry, negative 1x squared plus negative 4x plus c. All right, so now, hopefully you get an idea of the last step here. We are going to use the f information with the f function, plugging in negative 24 for the f value, and again, 3 for the x value. So negative 1 and then in parentheses, we're plugging in 3. The parentheses are very important in this case 
surrounding this x, so keep that in mind. Plugging in 3, we have plus negative 4x, so negative 4 times 3, and then plus c. So with the f, the x, the a, and the b plugged in, we have this. So now we're solving for c. On the right, we have negative 1 times 9, so negative 9. Negative 4 times 3, negative 12. Negative 9 minus 12 is negative 21. Plus C equals negative 24. We add the 21 to both sides to find that C equals negative 3. So all that work to find that C is negative 3. So now we have our function F. F is, and so now we are using this function at 4.8 to identify the function value when x is 4.8. Again, I recommend parentheses around the x value. So negative 4.8 squared. minus 4 times 4.8 minus 3 and we get negative 45.2 what was it 0.24 but regardless that looks like option B negative 45.2 so that was one example of quadratic extrapolation let's go ahead and do one more example a little bit faster here the nice thing is that F will always be AX squared plus bx plus c, f prime, 2ax plus b, and f double prime, 2a. So we start with 2a equals 4, f double primes equal f double prime. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. We find that a is 2. And so plugging in a to both f and f prime, we find that f prime is actually not 2a, but 2 times 2, which starts off with 4. So we have 4x plus b, now for f prime. We set f prime equal to f prime, and plugging in the x value of 1 when appropriate. 5 equals 4 times x, or 4 times 1, plus b. 4 times 1 is 4, so we subtract that 4 on both sides. 1 is equal to b. Alright, so we're almost done. We just have to set f equal to negative 1, plugging in positive 1 for the x value. We'll do that over here. We'll say negative 1 equals 2x squared is 2 times 1 squared plus 1 times 1 plus c, which we don't know. So we plugged in f, x, a, and b. All right. So we're solving for c. 2 times 1 squared is 2 plus 1 times 1 is 1. So we have 2 plus 1 is 3 plus c equals negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Negative 4 is c, so we have our complete function f, 2x squared plus 1x minus 4, basically. So now we are plugging in the x value they give us at the end of the problem. So 2.1, 2 times 2.1 squared, plus 1 times 2.1, so just plus 2.1, and then minus 4. So 2 times 2.1 squared, plus 2.1, minus 4 and we get 6.92 breaking out the eraser we see that a is our best answer 6.9 is 
our answer. If you have any questions on quadratic extrapolation, please let me know. Hope this helps.